Hey everyone! I wanted to uh, make this video today and talk about these right here. My homemade mortar rounds slash rocket rounds for airsoft. It kind of looks like a big tic tac right now. But got a lot of comments over these and I wanted to share with you guys how I made these so you guys can do the same thing too. For me, uh, I kind of started out with looking at the Nerf pocket footballs, the Vortex pocket footballs, but those things are like nine to fifteen dollars a piece. These take a couple dollars to make and they're just as effective. So let's go ahead and start by going over the materials list and uh, pretty much I've got a schematic here I'm going to show you a picture of and uh, we can go from there. Okay, here we go. So this is the schematic for this thing. So I've got we've got this foam tubing cut to about four inches right here. We've got uh, half right here. This is half of a two inch uh, foam stress ball. And I'm going to show you guys all these components here. I'm just going over the schematics. Uh, inside of this thing we've got four one inch bouncy balls, we've got drilled through the center of here, we've got a three quarter inch, three inch, or excuse me, it's a three quarter inch hole drilled down about 3.75 inches to fit the balls. In the top part here I drilled out some of the uh, bouncy ball to fit that last ball in it. I've tested it out with three and it just doesn't get the range, it doesn't have the mass to get the range I'm looking for. So. I had to kind of modify this and drill out some of the top, but um, uh, right here we've got a uh, plastic reusable straw that I've uh, cut down to about four inches, and in the back of the uh, two-inch piece of tu foam tubing, you can see down here I drilled a um, 0.25 inch hole just big enough to fit that um, that straw in there uh, on the end here for the fins I've got four of them you can't see it because of the side view here but there's four and I've got some foam matting that I cut that out of but uh, I'm, I'm gonna post this up uh, so you guys can download the uh, schematics if you want to build these yourself so let's take a look here so the materials list so here's a picture of the foam noodles that I bought I got all this stuff off of Amazon. Uh, it's pretty affordable. You can build these in bulk and build them a heck of a lot cheaper than you would if you were to buy 50 or 60 of those uh, Nerf foam uh, Vortex uh, pocket football. So noodles right here, 35 inches, 2 inch diameter. You get how many of them? Uh, was it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? Nine. 9 of them for 20 bucks, $21. You got the two inch foam stress balls. You get a whole 40 of them for 20, 25 bucks. Yep. Straws right here. What is that? Uh, nine inch straws, $7.99 for a pack of them. Got the uh, foam board right here. So just kind of standard paper, 9 by 12, 20 pack of them. Got the one inch uh, bouncy balls. I bought a bulk of them. There are 250 of them. That'll make about 60 or so of these foam mortar rocket rounds. 30 bucks for those. Of course, some orange duct tape. Uh, this duct tape, the MG888, I don't suggest using it. It uh, doesn't tear very well. So uh, I bought some 3M orange duct tape and it tears a lot better. It's a little bit brighter too. And I'll uh, show you guys the difference here. All right, super glue, and I'll show you what that's for. We got, uh, I had to make a uh, adjustment to the uh, fin so I could get some rotation out of them, and I'll show you what uh, we're going to use that for. It's a little piece I'm going to glue on the end, so it'll, um, actually four pieces, so you can get that rotation. Uh, and you got hot glue sticks to kind of glue everything together. All right, so here are all the components of... I've got everything laid out for you, so while the hot glue gun's warming up here, I'm going to uh, kind of just talk over everything. So here's that orange 3M multi-purpose tape. I've got uh, plastic reusable straws. 
You got the foam board right here. Here is the uh, oodles of noodles foam tube. I used all the foam tubes already, as you can see, I already got this one cut. I've, you know, have most of these things made, but I wanted to show you guys how to do this. So I've already got a uh, fin made here, and uh, some of the pieces cut out, and of course the four bouncy balls in this two-inch foam stress ball, already cut in half with the hole drilled in the center. All right. So, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take these, the straw, and what I did is I took a bunch of them all, 50 of them or 55, however many was in that pack, and I cut this little end off of here. It's kind of no purpose to it, it kind of gets in the way, and there's plenty of room left over in the rest of this straw here. So, what I wound up with was this, about a four inch piece of plastic straw that works perfect for our tail. So what we do after we get these cut out, which I've already got them cut out here for you guys, a uh, simple razor blade will work. I use this right here, just a utility knife. Cut it out, works real well. Uh, something I did find is uh, cutting this shape out. Initially what I did is I printed out that schematic and I just kind of cut a hole out in a piece of paper and was using that as my template and cutting those out. But eventually that uh, template got distorted and uh, these were not very uniform. So I've got a bunch of these that I've made that the fins are kind of kind of wonky on them. So what I did eventually is I took a piece of sheet metal and I made this so that uh, I can keep that shape uniform through all of them. So let's see if this thing's warmed up yet. Uh, yeah, it's warm enough. So what I do, come around this way. So I kind of take this right here. I just run a bead of hot glue down the end. And what I like to do is find the rough edge and use that to kind of go on the inside of the main body so that it um, kind of adds a little more grip to it. So the smooth end, I'll stick out of the back. So there's one. And go on to the next one here. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got some foam and sawdust and stuff. I've been doing some projects for the, the kids out of wood. I've been making some toys and stuff for them. But, all right, there's a second one. There's the last one. There we go. All right, next one. All right, there we go. Now we have part of the tail fin. And uh, these little pieces here, what I'm gonna show you. Let me grab this guy right here. All right. After doing some experimenting, what I found out was um, if I put these little pieces here, what we wind up with is some asymmetrical lift and it puts a spin on these. So once we get the rest of this built up, I'm going to glue these on there towards the end of making this thing. But um, I wanted to show that to you guys. I, I know I experimented with um, kind of putting them on there canted, but the issue is, I mean, it, it works fine. But I already, already built about 150 of these. There was no way I was going to tear these things apart and re-glue them on there at an angle. So I came up with this works just as well to put that spin and get you know get that uh, stabilization in flight so um, all right let's go on to the next step so now we have our main body right here We've got our bouncy balls let's shove them in all the way in so this is deep enough to fit all three and part of one and you'll see so um, because 
I need room for this. It's kind of tight in there. I had to modify these initially. Well, initially I had it so it was just a solid piece without the hole in it. But the issue is I couldn't get all four bouncy balls to fit in there. So I had to drill a hole in here to be able to fit the last one. Like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and glue this on there. Let's throw some more hot glue in this thing. And we might have enough. So what I found kind of through trial and error, do not put the hot glue on here. What's going to happen is it's going to melt this foam and it's going to get distorted and you're going to have to keep putting more and more glue on it as it dries and you're going to end up with this big glob. And uh, it's kind of a pain because it will distort it and it won't fit on there right. So what I do is I'll put it on the nose cone here. Put a good big thick bead on here all the way around. And I'll let it cool for just a moment. I'm going to need some more. this through here. So we're just going to push it through. I get plenty on there. Alright. So just kind of let it cool for a moment. That way that glue isn't too hot and you don't end up melting this and kind of end up with a big mess and got to add more glue and I try at one point I had a, a system I had like a whole box of them uh, and I finished the bodies and then I glue all these down and I was sticking them on there too fast and it was melting the, the foam around here. So let's see. Eh, that's probably good. Careful hot glue's hot. <laughs> all right. So what I like to do, give it a twist so it smears it all over on the inside. And then you just kind of let it sit there and do its thing. All right. So the next part... We have the fin. So same thing, don't apply the hot glue directly in there. What I like to do, because these balls, bouncy balls, there's a little bit of space and I want as much room at the end of this to secure in here because some of the issues I have were when this thing impacts, the force is so great that it would just rip this out and you'd end up with a big chunk of, let's see if I think I've got one in here. Nah, it's not in here, but pretty much it would just rip the end of this out and I've got a solution for it That's part of what the tapes for but we'll go over that I taped it up on the back, but we'll go over that in a minute how I do that. So let's go ahead and get this glued up So just apply a generous amount of glue I kind of like getting glue on the inside so um, it sticks right to the end of that bouncy ball because uh, it really has, uh, it sticks well to it. I've noticed if uh, I get contact with the glue and the straw with that bouncy ball, they come out less. So we'll just let that dry for a minute and then we can go over it. Well, actually, we'll just go from here. We'll set this one to the side and I've got one that's already made. So right here. So, you know, what's happening, I notice that when this thing impacts, you know, when it shoots far up high enough, and you can even see on this one, it's starting to kind of come tear loose in here. And even these will come off, come off after a while. I went ahead and decided to uh, reinforce it with duct tape and that seems to help a lot with the um, reusability of these things so I, I probably just in this this form like this I was probably getting two maybe three uses before the thing would fall apart uh, this one since I've made them this way they haven't fallen apart I can continue to use them so let's go ahead and get this duct tape opened up This one's the better one. The actual 
it wasn't duct tape. What was the other brand of that? So it, it was some off brand tape that, that I got off of Amazon that, um, I mean, it's okay, but it, um, it doesn't tear very easy and it kind of makes it hard to work with. This, this tear is very clean. So taping these to reinforce them. I'll get a piece eh, about this big. I'll tear it down the middle. I'm gonna set this over here. I guess we can go ahead and unplug the hot glue gun. Alright. So right here. So we got our half piece. And then, so to help reinforce this to keep it from popping off, I'm gonna stick a piece over here. Let's get it on there a little bit better. Just like that, and I'll kind of pull it tight. Keep it compressed. And I kind of make an X with it right here. Then what we do right here, let's get another one. I'm going to do the same thing for those empty spaces. So here we go right here. Set this aside. Right here. And then we're going to cover this up. And that way, we've got a good base for our support, and this will help out a lot. All right, next we're going to do this end. And it's the same process. You just kind of get some tape. Now, if you are making a bunch of these, you'd want to be efficient with this so you're not going through more than, you know, more tape than what you need to, but... I'm just going to demonstrate this real quick. So I kind of put it here, kind of wrap it around so it kind of goes this way and you're pulling down on this. Cross it and then we come back over. And we're going to do it the other, the other way so we kind of cross over it. Now we're going to go the other way. Just like that. And then, kind of shaking the table here. All right. And sometimes, you know, I don't get these holes drilled exact. And you can kind of use this tape to help readjust the, the tail there so it's a little more even. Now we have that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the inside. So, I measure this. Well, I looked up the calculation and it's like 6.3 inches all around, but uh, I tried 6.5 and, and maybe with the inconsistencies with how these things are made or whatever, it wasn't quite that. So, I went all the way up to 7 inches um, when I was just measuring it and that was just about perfect. For wrapping these up. So we're going to go all the way around. I got a little more, but that's okay. All right, there we go. And uh, this kind of serves more than one purpose. Uh, one, it, you know, it helps with the structural integrity of this thing. And then two, this is kind of rough here. So what this does, this adds a little, uh, takes away some of that drag that you're getting away from here. So it kind of smooths out that airflow and you get maybe a little bit more distance out of these things. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get the back end. All right, yeah, this video is going to take forever to upload. I've got 15 minutes already. All right, so here we go, wrap around. All right, so now then we've got that. Now there's one more thing that I'll do this when it comes to tape. You can probably see on this one, I put a band 
of that tape around here and that's to help just get a little bit more seal inside of that tube as I uh, you know to catch that CO2 to push it farther all right so I'll do the same thing so I'll go with that about seven inches um, split it down the middle wrap it around right here on the end sorry if I get this out of screen I'm trying to watch watch what I'm doing here not looking at the camera <sighs> all right so that right here gets a pretty good seal on the inside of that tube all right so let's go ahead and get these things glued on on the very end to get that spin going Bring this out of the way. Bring that guy out of the way. Out of the way. All right. So let's see here. This way. So we'll spin to. We want lift to spin it to the right. So we're gonna put them on this part right here. So as you can see, these these aren't too big. They're just little tiny pieces cut off and I'll use that to create drag and asymmetric lifts so that it spins. So we're gonna get the super glue, just make a little dab and this this works really well to bond this stuff together. It works pretty quick it's just the regular what is this uh, kind of photo focus just loctite liquid super glue you can buy them in like two packs at Walmart alright next one next Let's get you stuck in there. Just like that. And there we go. Super glue is sticky. <laughs> Who knew? Alright. So now we have there's a little bit of a tear there. Let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, someone's got a message. All right. Oh, another one. All right. So what I'll do is sometimes you can kind of see it here, but it sticks out farther. So I'll just trim it down even. So that way it doesn't catch on the inside of that tube. And sometimes, uh, and this was more for when I didn't have that little metal template to trace I would get uneven fins and I'd have to go and like stick each one down inside the tube and uh, make sure it fit inside of there there's still some of them that I'm going through but this is pretty much the finished product right here this thing is much cheaper to make than going to buy a bunch of those nerf pocket footballs so uh, I did try and make some with whistles, but I wasn't too happy with it. I had to cut some of the whistle down to fit it in the side, and it still sticks out, and it kind of gets in the way of, um, you know, getting inside the tube. So, um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to use those, but I did come up with an alternate that, uh, I think a lot of you will like, and I'm going to do another video over that. And it's, uh close to uh, what you get out of one of those tagging rounds that explodes you get a loud report but uh, that'll be for another video and uh, I'll see you later and I hope uh, some of you guys use this and save some money and uh, play more often alright see you later